Hey guys, hello everyone. Welcome to Rasayan Academy once again. So here we are in another video of practice on name reactions. Now we are going to do questions, some really important questions from June 2019 and December 2019 in this session. All right, and there are plenty of questions to solve from. All right, so goes without saying. Whenever you see a question, try to do this by yourself and then see the video solution. Okay. Also, guys, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do. Okay. Okay, chalo. So very very important all of you guys. First question very easy also. So here you see that you are given cyclohexanone, a ketone, a secondary amine, and you are having HCHO and H plus. So what does that give you? In the first step, you are given this combination which can generate aluminium ion. All right. So I am directly going to. Form the aluminium ion from the uh, formaldehyde acid and secondary amine. This is the aluminium ion that you form from here. So, guys, this aluminium ion, when there is a ketone present, the ketone can actually tautomerize to enol, and the enol is going to react on this. It is going to attack on this aluminium ion to give you a manic reaction. All right. So, this is a manic reaction. This is what you get in the first step. All right, manic base. This is what you get. Now, in the second step of this reaction, you have methyl iodide present, and it is not only methyl iodide. You also have a base. So let's say the methyl iodide is going to convert the amine into a quaternary ammonium ion in this way, and the base OH minus through E one C B mechanism through E one C B mechanism it is going to cause elimination. All right, as you can see, O minus falls back again, and NME three positive. A good leaving group is going to leave, and hence you are going to get this molecule, alpha beta unsaturated ketone. All right, so this is your manic reaction followed by the exhaustive methylation of the amine and elimination. Okay, to give you alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, and this is going to be a uh, Hoffman alkene because this is the only one possibility here is where you have the leaving group, isn't it? And the second step or the last step over here is the cyanide addition. Now cyanide addition, if you see, five to ten degree centigrade is going to be direct one two addition. And when there is heat given, it is going to be one four addition. All right, thermodynamic addition of the cyanide. All right, so this is what you have. C N going to attack on the fourth position. All right, and you get the enolate. Type intermediate, which is finally going to tautomerize back to taking a proton from the medium, or let's say after the aqueous workup, it will take back a proton and give you this molecule as option number B. So first correct answer is option number C to this question from June 2019. Manic reaction followed by the uh, one four, or let's say conjugate cyanide addition. Second question from here. June 2019, as you can see, major product formed in the following reaction. So when you have two mole, uh, molecules of benzaldehyde and you have a cyanide as the catalyst, which reaction could it be, guys? Yes, which reaction comes to your mind when you see the cyanide as a catalyst? It is absolutely benzoin condensation. Yes, another molecule of uh, benzaldehyde it is going to attack on. All right, it is your benzoin condensation reaction. It becomes OH CN O minus PH and H. All right, this is what you have. There is going to be a proton exchange. And O minus now falls back to eliminate the cyanide to give you this molecule. What is this molecule, guys? Absolutely, it is benzoin. It is benzoin. So the first step is benzoin condensation reaction. And A, all right. You also have second step to it. Not only benzoin is uh, going to be in the first part of the option. You have MnO2. MnO2 gives you allylic alcohol oxidation. Okay, oxidation of the allylic alcohol or benzylic alcohol. 
ठीक है सो अलाइलिक एंड बेंजाइलिक एल्कोहल आर मोर प्रेफर्ड फॉर ऑक्सीडेशन स्पेसिफिक केमोसिलेक्टिव ऑक्सीडेशन फॉर अलाइलिक एंड बेंजाइलिक एल्कोहल गिव्स यू दिस मॉलिक्यूल ऑन आफ्टर द फर्स्ट स्टेप राइट सो फर्स्ट स्टेप यू आर गोइंग टू गेट दिस मॉलिक्यूल आइदर ए और डी बी एंड सी आर एब्सोल्यूटली रॉन्ग देन वॉट एल्स कैन यू डू वेन यू मूव ऑनवर्ड्स यू हैव एन एच what is the oh minus going to do oh minus is going to attack let's say over here all right and then there is a carbonyl so what kind of a rearrangement can be possible guys yes absolutely this is your benzyl that you generate from the benzoin you have oxidized this to benzyl molecule and from benzyl you can do the rearrangement to benzylic acid isn't it absolutely this is oh after the aqueous work up it will become oh and two phenyl groups on the same carbon this is your benzylic acid all right so first reaction is benzoin condensation and the mno2 oxidation is uh, benzylic oh oxidation and the last reaction is uh, benzyl benzylic acid rearrangement so your answer could be option number b this is not correct okay chalo we move on to the next question let's see the major product of the following reaction is so what can you see guys in the first step try to do this question by yourself obviously you have the solutions yes so what is going to happen the nitrogen can attack on the benzylic group what is a benzylic group guys ch2 ph group this is equivalent to a benzylic group, right so there is this carbon to attack which is connected to the bromine and nitrogen is going to be protected all right you can write it like this ch to ph or you can directly write the bn group the same thing okay so this is going to happen first the nitrogen is protected and where does this proton go this amine is going to take away the proton excess proton on the nitrogen all right now the next step is you are having palladium so when you see palladium you have to understand this has to be some kind of a coupling reaction okay so the carbon iodine bond all right palladium is going to do the oxidative addition to the carbon iodine bond and let's say i'm directly writing it like this okay it has done oxidative addition so this bond is now going to add to this alkene system how does it add it adds in such a way that nitrogen or or the palladium it will go on the less hindered side all right so 1 2 3 4 and 5 member ring will form palladium will go right over here always on the right hindered side uh, less hindered side is more favored theek okay? hai so yes this is how you are going to write the palladium over here now if you want to consider the stereochemistry guys it is obvious that uh, since you have uh, joined both of the carbon and the palladium on the same side let's say this bond is below this bond is also going to be below but yes this bond can rotate it can rotate and it can go up and eliminate a hydrogen which is present okay so beta hydride elimination gives you this kind of a product and this is only possible because the bond can rotate and eliminate a hydrogen from above also but now what happens is guys in this reaction if you see in this reaction if you see that it is already a alpha beta unsaturated amide which could be stable but then the removal of this proton and isomerization will give you a more stable aromatic species isn't it that gives you a indole molecule which is aromatic in nature so that is absolutely going to happen you are getting isomerization after the uh, you know coupling reaction so that is why the answer to this question is option number b after isomerization you get the indole okay yes next question question number 4 guys very very important name reaction this is i hope that you uh, identify this name reaction on yourself okay so what is it let's draw quickly first of all guys it's uh, very much visible that you are having the dabco molecule yes this is your dabco molecule and then you have the alpha beta unsaturated ester in this way so what is the dabco going to do it's going to do the attack 
on the ester and it's going to give you an intermediate in this way. All right. O minus OME. It gives you this kind of an intermediate. Nitrogen has a positive charge absolutely. Now what will happen there is this whole aromatic group guys. We can write this whole aromatic group as AR because we won't require this in the mechanism. All right. So we would rather write this group as AR. That will make the mechanism simple. So the attack from the alpha position to the aldehyde is going to take place. All right, as you can see, the apco molecule is as it is connected till now, and there is this carbonyl OME and CHOH. It becomes along with the aromatic group. This is what you have. Now also there is one more catalyst present which can remove this proton from here and through the E1CB mechanism. Alright, through the E1CB mechanism it can eliminate. Let's see what's happening. One, one more proton is lost from this system CHOH and aromatic group. So what happens now from the E1CB mechanism it causes the elimination of the quaternary amine and finally what do you get? Finally you get alpha beta unsaturated ester. So it was already alpha beta unsaturated ester just that you have got one more part into the molecule on the alpha position you have got this aldehyde group attached okay which now becomes the alcohol. Now in the last step you have the benzyl amine attacking over here to give the alpha beta uh, to give the Michael addition all right so the benzyl amine gives you the Michael addition should I write the final product yes absolutely guys I hope that you have identified this reaction I'm directly writing the final product okay I hope that you have identified the first reaction what is it supposed to be it is BN group that is benzyl. The first part of the reaction this much is Bayless Hillman reaction. Okay. Whenever you see Dabco, just realize what is happening. That is your Bayless Hillman reaction if the Dabco is catalyzing the reaction of alpha beta unsaturated ester or aldehyde, and the reaction gives you alpha bond connectivity in this way. Alright, yes, absolutely. So your aromatic group is uh, basically this thing this is your aromatic group it is as it is all right and on this carbon it becomes alcohol on the next carbon there is ester and yes this is how the alpha beta attack has taken place answer is option number a you can just convert this uh, whole molecule ar group into this and you can write this down you are going to see a is your correct answer okay very well now we move onwards to question number 5 guys very important the major product A and B of the following reaction sequence are. So you see BMF and POCl3 combination. What does it give you? This is a combination for wilsmeyer hack reaction isn't it? For a wilsmeyer hack reaction yes. What does this reaction do guys? It gives you formylation on the aromatic system. But what happens is guys in the presence of heteroaromatic system as you can see this is indole and furan you have to select this is a question of selectivity if you are having one equivalent. So one equivalent is going to give you formulation on the more electron rich ring which is going to be the indole ring on the third position and when you have excess you are going to do uh, you are going to consider the formulation for the other ring also. Once the formulation has happened on one of these rings you are not going to do the same reaction on this ring you will select the other ring okay. So absolutely on the indole you get the formylation over the most electron rich position third position on the furan the most electron rich will be the fifth position. So these two positions are available for B. Okay so as you can see in option number D these two are available for B when the reaction reactant is there in excess for A only one formylation so that's going to be on the indole ring. So D is your correct answer. Answer is based on selectivity. Okay. Question number 6 as you can see major product A and B guys. So there is an alpha beta 
unsaturated epoxide over here and you have Gilman's reagent in the first step which is popular to give the 1,4 addition. So let's consider the epoxy, epoxide to be above the plane in this way. So the Gilman's reagent attacks from this position opens the epoxide and how is it going to attack guys that is above or below absolutely it is going to attack below from the less hindered side there is your double bond. Alright now even if aqueous workup is given or not given you are going to consider aqueous workup this becomes allylic alcohol. Now zinc copper couple and CH2I2 is guys cyclopropanation this is Simon Smith reaction once again. Yes, it has been very frequently asked in your exam. So, what happens is it is chelation controlled cyclopropanation. So, it is going to do the cyclopropanation on the same side as your alcohol group. So, your answer should be option number A on the same side as alcohol above to above. Alright, so this is your correct answer for this question. Moving onward guys, another question. So all of these questions are still your June 2019 questions only. And this is a pericyclic reaction but also a very important name reaction too. So let's consider this. The first step of this reaction is LIHDMS which is a big base, bulky base and that is going to remove this proton from here to get you the enolate. Okay, The enolate is going to look like this. And is the enolate locked over here? Absolutely locked with TMSCl. So you can just directly write OTMS in this case. Okay. And then heat. What is this heat going to give you? Heat gives you a 3 3 sigma tropic reaction. Alright. But guys, at the end of this 3 3 sigma tropic reaction, what do you have? At the end of this uh, 3 3 sigma tropic reaction, if you have a carboxylic acid, or a carboxylic acid salt, it is known as Ireland Claisen. Okay, Ireland Claisen reaction. And now in the next step, you have PHSECL, that is, you have an electrophile. SE could be attacked because CL is a good leaving group, right? So you are going to consider the bond cleavage over here, and the ring is going to attack the selenium in this way, such that you get a five membered ring. You are getting a five member ring all right and a double bond over here this is what you get as the end product of option number two third step is heteroatom oxidation so you are going to write heteroatom oxidation i am going to write it in this way heteroatom oxidation you will have selenium oxidized pH is already there. Let's say selenium is oxidized to give you Se plus and O minus. So this O minus guys, this is going to uh, and heating is going to initiate a syn elimination or syn pyrolytic elimination reaction. So the next to the next carbon, the proton which is available, it is going to take away that proton and finally the product is going to be an alkene system in this way. Okay, just like cope elimination, it is also selenoxide elimination. And A is your correct answer for this question. Okay, very nice one. Let's move onward to another good question. Number 8. The major product formed in the following reaction is. So, it's super easy. As you can see, it is alcohol and NOCl is given. So, what are you going to do? Guys, just directly attack the alcohol on the NOCl because Cl minus is a good leaving group and you are going to find out that it can give you this kind of an ester, a nitrile ester, isn't it? Nitrile ester in the presence of light. Yes, now you have react, you have understood this reaction. What is it? It is Barton nitrile ester rearrangement or a, yes. Or a remote functionalization reaction alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. From this delta carbon, it's going to remove a hydrogen, become OH, and the nitrosyl group is going to attach over here. So, what do you get, guys? You get this molecule, isn't it? Yes, and I have also told you that this nitrosyl, guys, in the presence of an acid in the next step, in the presence of an acid, it can also tautomerize to give you the oxime. Okay, so just consider the possibility of having an oxime in this way. 
Why have I written this OH on this side? Because that is going to cause steric interaction if I write the OH over here. So here there is the lone pair. On the opposite side you have the OH. Just keep that in mind. Now since there is excess acid present, what can you do guys? You can just write this uh, whole thing. In this way it is going to become OH2 positive, a good leaving group. And what is going to result? Beckman rearrangement in this case. Alright, so Beckman rearrangement is going to happen in such a way that the trans group migrates. This has been your trans group. Alright, so there will be OH over here. There will be nitrogen double bond and the ring has expanded guys. There will be a positive charge over here. So water is going to attack on this carbon. It gives you an alcohol type molecule. Okay, or an enol type system which is finally going to Alright, let us just write the enol type system. Alright, so double bond OH. This is what you get. And that is going to tautomerize to the caprolactam system. That is amide bond. Okay, so your answer is option number B for the Beckman rearrangement. So first reaction was Barton nitrile ester uh, photolysis. And the second reaction over here, this is your Beckman rearrangement. Okay. Absolutely, very nice question. Question number 9 from June 2019 only. Yes, guys, structure of the product B, which is obtained in the following sequence of reaction. So, once again, it's up to you. Draw the molecule nicely. Yes, before seeing the examples. So, if I just write the molecule in this way, let's say this is a hydrogen, I am just rotating few of the bonds so that uh, we can understand the whole process easily okay so what is happening guys only 60 degree centigrade and nothing else is given no reagent is given to you right what are you going to do you're just going to draw the molecule in a proper way and when nothing is given only heat is given either you suspect a 3 3 sigma tropic or a in reaction so this is absolutely an in reaction right the bonds are going to form between these two carbons one two three four five this uh, makes a five member ring. Let us just uh, draw the five member ring over here. Let's say these are the two carbons. There is one methyl, another CH2MgCl over here. On this position, you have the vinylic double bond in this case, and this carbon has the two methyl groups, right? This is what you have. And finally, in the presence of alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, guys. You are having the methyl grignard, right? Alkyl grignard. Grignard rea uh, reagents never give you 1 4 addition until and unless you have some copper uh, Gilman's reagent or so, right? So it is just going to give you from this carbon, it is just going to give you direct attack over here and it must become the alcohol, okay? So it is becoming the alcohol OH and the bond is as it is. And on this carbon, the bond is as it is as well. This is what you have. It matches with option number C the most. Okay. This is what you are going to have. Question number 98. This is the answer. Option number C. Very well, all of you. Because you are going to get a direct addition in the last step. So, first reaction was in reaction. And the second reaction was the 1-2 attack of the methyl of the alkyl pignard. Okay. Very nice question guys. Now the question number 10 is from a December 2019 paper. Very very important paper this is. Right and let's see what's uh, the first question. The major product formed in the following reaction is. So what do you see? You only see light and you see a carbonyl compound. So you are first going to check whether, the, whether you have a gamma hydrogen or not. So alpha, beta and gamma. Yes you do have a gamma hydrogen. Two gamma hydrogens. So what's going to happen guys, you are going to follow Norrish type 2 mechanism, okay? So in the Norrish type 2 mechanism, you will see that this uh, oxygen is protonated or you can just directly uh, form the radicals. Let's say I have uh, taken away a proton from this uh, gamma hydrogen or taken away a hydrogen radical. Okay, we are talking about radicals over here. So a hydrogen radical is removed from the alpha, beta and gamma hydrogen. You have two possibilities. Either a cyclization product is possible. 
but here the cyclization product gives you only a four membered ring or a fragmentation product is possible from the Norwich type 2 reaction in this way we don't see any fragmentation product in the option guys this option is not present isn't it this option is not present in the whole uh, examples uh, in the whole option so you are not going to consider this possibility this is it option number 4 is the correct answer it is a Norish reaction type 2 ok yes so fourth is your correct answer very very good very easy let's consider this awesome question from December 2019 once again what is asked the correct order of reactions involved in the following transformation is so these kind of questions take a lot of time but uh, yes you can just try them out one by one what can be done guys if you see first of all that in first reaction you have a alpha beta unsaturated ketone system then there is high possibility that you are doing the Michael addition first okay so yes very big hint and the reaction is taking place in the presence of an acid so you get the more stable enolate or let's say the more stable enol system so the first proton has to be removed from this carbon so that you get this kind of a enol more substituted enol CO2M what is going to happen now let's try out the Michael addition this is how you are doing the Michael addition alright I am directly writing for the protons direct proton uptake and removal that gives you let's say CO2ME over here I am directly writing this the proton is directly put up over here right Chalo. so this is your molecule after the Michael addition yes now after the Michael addition what is possible what can you see guys a, a proton removal from this carbon can be done yes it could be done and it could give you this molecule it could give you an enol in this way let's say I'm writing CO2ME over here and I'm writing this whole ring 1, 2 and 3 I'm writing this whole chain on this side because we want to do the aldol reaction so let's try out if the, if the aldol reaction is possible absolutely it is possible but if I write the aldol reaction what is it uh, going to become guys Deco, this molecule that you get now is going to be like this alright just be careful you have one, one, two, three, one, two, three on this position you had the carbonyl so the bond is going to open up this is going to be O minus alright yes this is going to be OH and there is one more methyl on this carbon yes absolutely okay so this is what you get as the product of the aldol reaction okay aldol is possible over here very well the last reaction is quasi Faversky rearrangement so what do you do with the quasi Faversky rearrangement guys how do you proceed with this yes let's say you are having a big anion over here so I am only considering this one as uh, this your yes I am just writing CR3- I am deliberately writing it like this to reduce the size of the nucleophile and yes what is quasi Faversky guys if you open up this bond from here alright if you are opening up this bond from here let's say on this side on the carbonyl side what do you get CO2ME alright you have a CO2ME molecule and let's say this is what you have the bromide is still over here and also the carbonyl after the CR3 attack nucleophile it is still over here there's a methyl there's a OH there's a negative charge over here so what is bound to happen the negative charge can fall up on this carbon and the Br- minus can leave because there's a leaving group so this is quasi uh, Faversky reaction leading to two five membered rings in this way alright two five membered rings over here which is 
going to have the carbonyl CR3 on the junction and CO2 ME also on the junction and on this carbon you have a OH and a methyl okay so it is very evident that from here you can leave this OH because from here uh, from here a proton could be lost so you are going to get this molecule after the elimination of the OH and the proton right yes this is your methyl as it is and on the junction you have these two big molecules so Quasi favors key rearrangement after this 3 is your correct answer you can match the whole mechanism once again all right next good question from december 2019 paper as you can see is right over here the major product formed in the following reaction is so guys it's very very easy in the presence of a lewis acid catalyst the epoxide is going to open up in such a way that you always generate the more stable carbocation all right so a more stable carbocation is going to be in this way this is your more stable carbocation which is going to form so a hydride a hydrogen is above and a hydride bond is going to transfer there is a hydrogen shift so if the hydrogen shift takes place guys that is going to uh, happen from above the plane because the hydrogen is present above and the methyl which we write over here this one guys when there is a carbocation it becomes planar okay so that is why we are going to write the hydrogen above we will write the methyl below and this is going to become your carbonyl okay the bond is going to break over here it's going to become the carbonyl so the answer of this question is uh, going to be option number one as you can see very very simple next question number 13 is the major product a and b in the following reaction sequence are so as you can see you have alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl you have h2o2 and naoh now guys the junction is not properly given what is the uh, you know carbon what is the stereochemistry of the carbon present over here but we suppose it to be in such a way that it favors the let's suppose it is on the above let's suppose the hydrogen is above or let's say even if it is not provided what you see from here is if the reaction has to happen on this carbon let's say h2o2 and oh minus there will be this peroxy anion which is created which is going to attack over here so based on the methyl which is present it is above so the attack is going to take place from the less hindered side that is from below Okay, so we are just going to write the attack taking place from below which means that this methyl also gets above all right so this is what you are going to have this methyl as it is and it has become the enolate kind of a bond the o minus falls back to eliminate this system all right and the epoxide forms from below the plane the methyl is once again above this is your carbonyl once again so you are going to form the alpha beta epoxy uh, system now in the next step you are having the hydrazine so have you studied this reaction before in the name reaction playlist absolutely you have what is this name reaction guys when you have formed the hydrazone and it is alpha beta un uh, unsaturated or alpha beta epoxy system yes in the presence of a base right the base is going to remove this proton from here all right and the ring opens up yes so this is very much the Vartan rearrangement reaction even if you don't have a base the protons are going to be very very acidic on the hydrazine and they could be removed just by the acetate ion also all right so this acetate ion is going to basically protonate this uh, oxygen in this way protonate the oxygen and the acetate ion can eliminate this whole system so you are going to get a double bond one methyl and n double bond n h all right once again the acetate attacks on this proton gets you a negative charge over here so the overall reaction is basically vartan rearrangement it is going to give you a negative charge over here which can take a proton from the acetic acid system so you have a hydrogen finally so what is your correct answer for this question your correct answer is option number two the epoxide forms below because of steric reasons and that is rearrangement all right Vartan rearrangement this is
all right guys so let's continue with question number 14 over here so the question is again from december 2019 paper it's asking you the major product in the following reaction is now this is a very simple question and it is a repeated question in the previous year so if you can see you have already uh, seen this question in the previous year question video right maybe 2014 or 15 like that right and it is a repeated question as you can see so what is this question guys you are having an alcohol and the ethyl group and in the first reaction you are going to see CHCl3 and KOH this is a mixture which is going to give you a carbene CCl2 <clears throat> on which the phenol is going to attack from the second position all right that is from the ortho position so that gives you an intermediate in this way and that is going to lead to basically formylation reaction okay so this reaction is nothing but Riemer Tiemann reaction okay yes and so on the reaction mechanism uh, is already done you can check out the Riemer Tiemann reaction video it's uh, done already right so this is your Riemer Tiemann reaction first one and you are going to get ortho formylation since the para position is blocked all right so the para position is blocked so you are definitely going to get the formylation major on the ortho position only all right and uh, usually you get it uh, major ortho only right now in the second step you have h2o2 and oh minus so what is it going to give you it gives you the peroxy anion the peroxy anion is going to attack over the aldehyde bond opens up and yes and here you are having the tetrahedral intermediate in this way when the bond falls back this aryl group is going to shift on the oxygen and OH minus leaves this is the dacin oxidation all right this reaction is dacin oxi oxidation and it, uh, it's going to give you O minus over here right this carbon migrates the aryl group migrates on the oxygen it gives you O minus once again all right so yes oxygen C double bond O and this is uh, going to be H over here now one more OH minus attacks on this carbon the bond is going to open up gives you an alcohol only right so after hydrolysis after complete hydrolysis you are going to get this kind of a diol okay substituted catechol molecule so as you can see the answer is option number one only right but it is your Riemer Tiemann reaction followed by dacin oxidation okay yes all right guys let's move on to question number 15 another important reaction in december 2019 paper major product formed in the following reaction is now what is this reaction guys let's see in the presence of uh this is your si tri isopropyl so you can just write it r3 okay there's no role of the isopropyl group there's role of this allylic silyl group over here in the presence of TiCl4 what reaction is going to happen so you have already studied this it is Sakurai allylation reaction in the presence of a Lewis acid first of all it's going to let's say form a bond with TiCl4 and when it actually forms a bond it will become TiCl3 one of the Cl- eliminates the oxygen gets a positive charge and what happens is the Cl- will further attack on silicon and this bond is going to fall over and give you the conjugate addition in this way. Alright, it gives you the conjugate addition in this way. So the molecule must look something like this. CiCl3, this is what you have. Now there is a new bond over here, 1, 2, 3. Yes. So, <clears throat> yeah, once again, this is your Sakurai allylation reaction, guys. And the allyl group has attached over here. That is the importance of this reaction. Okay, that's why we call it the Sakurai allylation reaction. But does it lead to the product formation? Not yet. What is happening, guys? You still have O minus present over here. So, maybe the bond can attack over one of these systems. Which carbon? Let's see which will give you a stable ring 1, 2, 3, 4 no this one not it can give you a, a 4 member ring though but we don't want a 4 member ring when there is a possibility of the higher ring so it will attack over here bond falls up like this okay 
so when there is a possibility of the higher ring formation that is a five member ring formation we are not going to form the four member ring all right so this is one two three four five member ring formation and uh, this carbon is let's say carbon number one carbon two and three so one two and three on this you get the negative charge all right so what is this negative charge going to do it is going to attack on r3 sicl which had formed and attacks on silicon to give you the final product in this way sir3 once again and on the junction you have a double bond oxygen over here okay so basically the answer is option number a and this reaction is sakurai allylation reaction all right very very important this is okay question number 16 as you see guys this is also a similar reaction that you have seen also the mechanism is a little bit different major product formed in the following reaction is so you see over here you are using a catalyst sodium cyanide and you don't only have an aldehyde if it was the only aromatic aldehyde you will say it is benzoin reaction benzoin condensation it is not only an aldehyde it is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl also what are you going to do definitely you will see that this aldehyde molecule is being attacked by the cyanide in this way perfural gives you a tetrahedral intermediate which is definitely going to remove the proton on the same carbon this is how the reaction proceeds it becomes oh this is your cyanide and a negative charge is very highly stabilized on the alpha carbon now guys it's going to do conjugate addition so this is not the benzoin reaction but the reaction mechanism mechanism is very very similar to it so that's why we discuss this reaction over here minus and one more pH all right what happens next next is maybe you are going to grab a proton over here proton exchange just like what happens in the benzoin let's say you are doing a proton exchange over here C O minus and the cyanide right then there is this uh, pH group over here carbonyl another pH all right so O minus falls back, cyanide leaves. What are you going to get? You are going to get a molecule where there is a carbonyl group close to the furfural system. This is going to be your major product. All right, where is it? It is present in option number C, as I can see. Okay, yes, third option. All right, what's wrong with the other ones? Here, the direct addition is taking place. No, guys, direct addition will not take place. Not the correct answer. All right, what happens with option number one? Some kind of electrophilic aromatic substitution is happening, but for that, you don't require cyanide. So, one is also wrong. And here, how do I know electrophilic aromatic substitution? Because here, the furan has attacked from the fifth position. Same over here, the furan has attacked on the fifth position. You are not doing this kind of a reaction in the presence of cyanide okay so it's a benzoin type condensation reaction and your answer is option number three so question number 17 that we see is the major product a and the byproducts b formed in the following reaction are now this is a very important reaction because not only the major product the byproducts are also asked that's why is it it's important right so basically when you look at the diol vicinal diols okay and when you see this kind of a molecule, what is this molecule, guys? A carbon having two imidazole groups and one double bond with sulfur. So basically, these imidazole groups are nothing. It is just a good leaving group. Okay. So you can just compare this molecule with C double bond S, Cl and Cl. Right. Just <clears throat> compare this molecule with this because the Cl are good leaving group. Similarly, the imidazoles are also good leaving group, right? So what are you going to do? You are just going to first of all protect the 1,2 diol. Now these 1,2 diols guys, they might look like that they are cis to each other. They are not cis. 
because when you rotate you see there there are the two ethers which are trans to each other right they are anti periplanar they are trans if you just try to bring them together that that now they are cis okay on the same side then if you are doing the rotation the oh will go below all right so yes the oh which are written on the same side they are not actually cis they are trans when you are looking at this kind of a system if you have kept both of the alkyl groups on the same side now what are we going to do about it yes we are just going to do the mechanism this reaction is core winter olefination okay this is the reaction core winter olefination very very important this is now what is happening you are taking this uh, the diols and you are just converting the diols into this kind of a group because uh, Imidazoles are good leaving group. And what is the phosphine going to do? Or the phosphite? Trimethyl phosphite over here. It is going to attack over sulfur. One of the bond opens up in this way and the other bond opens up like this. You are going to get a carbene. You will actually get a carbene intermediate. Okay. This way. Yes. So guys, if you want to write this molecule in this way or if you want to write this molecule in this way, it is the same thing. That is, it is the same thing. Both of the OH you can write like this, both of the OH you can write like this. It is the same thing. Alright, however, it is uh, with respect to the alcohols, it is easy to visualize how you are going to get the trans molecule, right? Because here both of the alcohols are going to eliminate, you are going to get a cis product, which is actually wrong, right? So this is just to understand that both of the alcohols are not cis to each other, they are going to give you a trans alkene, okay? So that is why we have done, we have taken all of this uh, effort to understand that this is not a cis alkene it is a trans alkene that you are going to result when you have such a conformation of the system okay so that you don't do wrong so whenever the ethyl groups are trans or the methyl groups are trans in this way and the alcohols are written cis then also you are going to get a trans alkene and when and when the system is both of the methyls are written in this way and the oh are written trans then also you are going to get a trans alkene only okay so just be careful about that so all right you have the trans alkene but what is the byproduct the byproduct will be you are getting the sulfur eliminates with the phosphite so this is one of the byproducts right over here that you see and here the co2 molecule is eliminating in this step co2 molecule eliminates so this is also one of the byproducts so the answer is option number 1 Okay, so yes guys, these were 17 questions on June 2019 and December 2019 paper. Very many questions I have provided you guys. I hope that your practice is going on good. So more videos are coming up. Stay tuned and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Bye everyone. Take care.